I treat a patient with Lyme disease, I would start with the detoxification herbs. You know, don't start by killing bugs because you already have a tissue full of toxic carcasses in the, in the tissues. Don't add more carcasses, clean the carcasses out first, okay? So, so I, use a dra I use drainage remedies. The drainage remedies that I use most often are berber and parsley from Nutramedics because one remedy clears out the liver, the gallbladder, the kidney, the lymphatic system, and the ground matrix. If you do that with products of any other company, you're gonna have to buy four or five products. So don't do that. Use one product. Okay. Part berber and parsley. So one night berber or one day berber, next day parsley. And how many when, drops were? When, when you when you do those products, typically it's eight or ten drops for an adult. Okay. Uh, it, but you say, well, how often? Well, as often as you need to for your toxicity. Okay. If you're having a Herx reaction, you do it every ten minutes in a, in a half a cup of water. Uh, if you if you're having no Herx Herx reactions, maybe you do it two or three times a day, so you don't have a Herx reaction. So okay. it's preventative. You know, make sure you get the mercury out of your teeth because people have a hard time getting rid of any kind of illness if they have a mouthful of mercury amalgams. The mercury poisons the, the immune system, poisons the nervous system, and poisons the body in general. Poisons most of, most of the metabolic enzymes. So get rid of the mercury. Uh, you know, when you when you've gotten rid of the mercury in the teeth, the mercury amalgams in the teeth, then get the, rid of the microscopic mercury in your, in your tissues. You know, I use uh, zeolite HP for example to get rid of the mercury in the tissues. Zeolite HP is a neutromatic herbal that a neutromatic clay that's quantum physically imprinted to help mobilize the toxins out of, out of the cells into the gut so that the clay that's in the gut can bind up and carry it in the toilet. And how do you use the zeolite? Well, the zeolite can be used daily uh, in, in someone that's uh, zeolite HP can be used daily in somebody that's already had the mercury out of the teeth. If they've not had the mercury out of the teeth and they want to use the uh, clay daily, they should use the zeolite plain also for the But the zeolite HP actually will mobilize mercury out of the tissues. And so that may be too much of a good thing for somebody to still get mercury in the teeth. Okay. And then what are herbs that you were going to tell? Yeah, well, there's like, a lot of other a lot of other herbs that can be beneficial. You know, herbs, to support, herbs, herbs to support the adrenals, uh, adrenal support. Herbs to support this, the, the relaxation, the sleep. Uh, you know, the, the Amatia was studied at the University of Guayaquil in Ecuador in 108 uh, chronically insomniac patients. And they found that it put 82% of them to sleep even though they were chronically insomniac. And so it works well, you know, when everything else fails. Uh, Amatilla. Yeah, yeah. Amatilla, yes. Uh, you know, uh, use, the, uh, use the sparga to deal with the sulfur drug buildup. The sulfur drug buildup blocks the detox pathways, so that's why the sparga is in the program. So it's another detox remedy. So once, you, once all those things are going, then it's okay to, to kill some bugs. Oh, but, okay. But, uh, but, you, but you don't kill too many at one time. You, you start with one drop of cemento, let's say, one drop of bandol, because you can even get a Herx reaction with that amount, with that strong. What is important is that the remedies were also quantum physically imprinted, as well as being extracted in a way where all the actives were present. And so that's what, what creates the magic. You know, cemento is a is an immune system adaptogen. If the immune system is overactive, it'll bring it down. If the immune system is underactive, it'll bring it up. If the immune wow. system, if part of the immune system is overactive and the other part's underactive, then it'll do both in that patient. So it's, it's, a, it's a valuable remedy that way. Uh, you know, the, the banderol uh, is, a, is a very powerful broad-spectrum antimicrobial. It kills fungus, bacteria, uh, lime, all the Lyme-related bugs, uh, mycoplasma, uh, wow. staph, strep, uh, clostridia, okay. all those things, as well as uh, uh, you know, the, the, not just the funguses, but also the uh, protozoal parasites uh, and, and many of the uh, worm parasites. But we also do the serapeptase along with that because most patients that are chronically ill have chronic uh, over, over coagulation. So they're producing too much fibrin in their body, too much clot in their body. And so the fibrin builds up against the capillary wall, blocks the transfer of oxygen through the tissues, and, uh, through the blood vessels into the tissues. Yeah. So you do that 30 minutes before food with water only. So you start that usually you know, before you get on high doses of the enzymes because the serapeptase will strip away the, the fibrin so that the toxins can actually move into the veins and, and into the lymphatics and move back toward the central circulation. That is a big problem we have and most of the, the, the limeys are having surgeries to open the veins and all that and I said yeah. it's better to treat instead yeah, of the surgery. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing research in Dallas on the on the CCSDI condition but we, what we find is that uh, all those patients that have that have chronic inflammation in the jugular veins and unless you settle the inflammation down at some point the, the, the vein is likely to block off again. So it's a, a wasted invasive procedure in my, in my opinion. It looks like we're going to be able to open up most of the jugular veins without any invasion at all. So, you know, research will tell us that hopefully in the next few months, but you know, right now we're seeing very promising results.
Doctor, uh, a message for patients with Lyme disease, you as an educator and as a, as a doctor, what would you tell us to do? Because so many patients are trying to do this 100% by themselves. Yeah. If you don't have anybody else, to reach out. You know, Maybe there's somebody, maybe there's a friend, maybe there's a neighbor, maybe there's a, somebody in a church, somebody in a synagogue, somebody out there that can help you, that's willing to help you, and will be blessed by helping you. Uh, don't, don't try to do it alone. If you're, if you're trying to do this alone and you're really gravely ill, it's, it's very challenging.